This lesson deals with supplemental problem 8.3. You can find this problem in the course ebook in the chapter 8 supplemental problems on page 4. The circuit shown here has two inputs and an output and has four resistors. It's called a differential amplifier or sometimes a subtractor circuit. If we pick the ratio of R4 to R3 to be the same as R2 to R1, we get a rather interesting result. I want you to solve for V3 in terms of V1 and V2. Let's start with labeling our voltages and currents of the op amp. We have no current going in and no current going out. And there's feedback around the op amp, so the voltage across the terminals will be driven to zero. Let's label all the voltages in the circuit. Call this one V1, V2, and V3. I'll show a common ground. Let's connect all these together. Call this voltage V4. I'll assign a current in the resistors. I'll call this I1, I2, I3. And then I4 is the same as I3 because there's no current going into the op amp. All right, let's go around this loop over here. The rise in voltage is V1, the drop is I1 times R1, a rise of 0, and then a drop of V4. And that's what this equation A is. Now since the current in R3 is the same as R4, we can use the voltage divider rule. So the voltage V4 is equal to R4 over R3 plus R4 times V2. Now let's substitute that back into equation A. So V1 is equal to I1 R1 plus V2 times R4 over R3 plus R4. I have V1 and V2 in an equation. We'll need more equations to get rid of this term right here. We've gone around this first loop. We've kind of gone around this loop with the voltage divider. Let's go around this loop over here. The rise in voltage is V4. The drop is 0. And then the drop across here would be I2, R2, and then a drop of V3. Now I have an equation that has V4 in it, I2 and V3. But I know that V4 is equal to R4 over R3 plus R4 times V2. And of course, throw away the zero, so I got this left over. How is the current I1 and I2 related? Well, I1 is entering a node, zero is entering a node, and I2 is leaving, so I1 has to equal I2. I go back to equation one and solve for I1. It's going to be equal to V1 minus the quantity V2 times R4 over R3 plus R4, and then divided by R1. Again, it's also equal to I2. Let's go back to equation C and substitute that back in right over here. So I've got V2 times R4 over R3 plus R4. And then I have R2 times I2, which is this expression. So I've got R2 divided by R1. And I've got V1 minus V2 times R4 over R3 plus R4 plus V3. Let's solve for V3 now. So V3 is going to be equal to this term here, which is V2 times R4 over R3 plus R4. And I bring this stuff on the other side of the equation. So this minus sign will become a plus V2. I've got R2 over R1, and then I've got R4 over R3 plus R4. And then I have this term going on the other side of the equation, so it's a minus R2 over R1 times V1. Now I've got this term common to both of these. Let's pull that out. So V2 times R4 over R3 plus R4. I have one left over here, and then R2 over R1, and then this term times V1. Now here we are a little clever in doing some factoring. Let's write this as R4 divided by R3. And then what's left over here would be R4 divided by R3 plus 1. And times this quantity. And now if I make this ratio the same as this ratio, these terms drop out. I get that V3 is equal to V2 times R4 over R3. Then minus V1 times R2 over R1. But that's the same as R4 over R3. Or you could substitute in for this ratio, R2 over R1. I have as the output voltage V3 is equal to the difference of V2 and V1 times either R4 over R3 or R2 over R1. So what I've got here is the difference of voltages. It's also called a differential amplifier in the sense of taking the difference of two voltages and multiplying by a scalar. And this is supplemental problem 8.3.